Now, let's get to Moses. Mm. Are they going to retain him or not? Well, that's the, that's the million-dollar question. Because as we see the rise in interest for halves, uh, the debate will be Mitchell, Mitchell Moses' contract to the Parramatta Eels until the end of 2023. But effectively, the Eels have six months to retain him or he'll go to the open market from November 1. Um, and as will every other player off contract at the end of 2023. The question is, guys, is what's he worth... And the understanding is, at this point in time, is that the Eels will have to get to, to around that million-dollar mark to retain him. Now, that's, that's the debate. Mm. Is he a million-dollar player? Well, he knocked back a million dollars from the Broncos. To start there you go. So he's going to get it. Yeah. He knocked back a million from the Bronx before they signed Reynolds mm. to, to stay at Parramatta. The, 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 you know, what we all know is happening is that Belfin's now in the market and are still desperate to sign a, a marquee player. And if they can entice uh, Moses to get out of his contract, I think, a year early, I think there'd be a conversation they'd have. I you, think as they get closer to November, the, the Dolphins are going to have to try and pull a, an ace out of the sleeve somewhere. The early indications are that Moses will test his worth on the open market, so he'll, he'll go to Nove- November 1. Now, guys, we, all, we have seen what has happened in the past with the Eels around contract situations mm. and certainly around semi-final period. And that will be a fascinating process if Mitchell, one of their biggest names, declares that he's he's going to go beyond the finals to test his worth. They need to keep him. They need to keep him, but he's entitled to go to market and get the best price he can. Like, I totally agree with players. Well, Paramount now. Yeah, but but players are entitled to test the market, and you'd be mad if you didn't. And then ultimately, he'll have to make a decision if... If there's an offer out mm. there that's better than what Parramatta can afford, but you're 100% mm. right with Parramatta, after losing Reed Marnie, they can't afford to lose Mitchell Moses. Mm. Yeah, they got a big test this week against the <coughs> Panthers, and we talk so much about Parramatta and whether they got the side to, to win a premiership, and not only the side, but the, the mental fortitude, I think, has been what's been questioned with Parramatta over a long period of time. Is this week a really important game for them coming off that loss last week against the Cowboys? It's important to see how they regroup. And the last thing Brad Arthur's going to want to see is the wheels fall off completely and Penrith put a score on it. So they can go out and lose this week. It's just going to be the matter of the loss yeah. that they do lose. And it, look, it's too early. Last year we were seeing teams... You know, South's got two 50-point scorelines put on last year. Mm. Still made the grand yeah. final. The, the competition is different than it used to be. It's a lot more up and down. Uh, you can put... Momentum is so important these yeah. days. If you get it, if you get in one of those games like we've seen Penrith do continually with teams where they just lock them down in their, in their own quarter and they're, they're struggling. They, Penrith are playing games where the opposition's getting four or five tackles in their half. Mm. Yeah, in the whole half of football. Like, so Penrith could do that to you. I, I'm not too concerned about Parramatta. Parramatta is still a building side and they've still got injuries. They're still coming back. Like, Opacek's back from injury straight back in the centres. Mm. They're still skinny out wide. Parramatta, they've still got three or four players still to come back out there. 